All right, I couldn't wait any longer, guys. I'm so incredibly excited about this game. You have no idea, and you'll hear that excitement throughout. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. A few minutes early, I've been sitting here just waiting to start. I wanted to do this earlier today, but um, had to wait for the Taskmaster Challenge to finish up. So everybody had time to watch that video when it came out at noon. But holy cow, guys, I don't think there's a game I have anticipated as much as this one. And in my short time being able to play it so far, I am not disappointed. Uh, we're going to dive in, and I'm just going to try to show you as much of the features of the, the game as I can uh, in a couple of hours. Uh, and then I am going to start a campaign. I'm not going to start my uh, campaign today. I'm going to start a campaign to show it to you, but... I'll start a series on this game, hopefully later today, early tomorrow, you'll have your first video for that. But dang guys, this, this game, uh, I've posted it already, and some of you may be familiar with some of these games, but the best way I can describe this game is to say it combines some of the best features of Total War, Ultimate General Civil War, Victoria 2, and uh, there's one more that I've been talking, oh, and Civil War 2. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, I'm excited. Mr. Laker, hello. Good to see you guys. Um, I saw that Pixelated Apollo was streaming this game at 2 as well, so that might eat into our audience a little bit, but that's okay. So this is Grand Tactician, The Civil War. The game will be available to all of you on August 21st, so in less than three weeks. Uh, the keys went out for YouTubers today, uh, so you'll probably be seeing a lot of content for this game coming out uh, over the coming days. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the key features of the game. Uh, we'll start an 1861 campaign just so you can see how everything starts out uh, because it gives you a lot of kind of the, an introduction to the gameplay and the features. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop out of that and jump to an 1862 campaign where the armies are already in the field so you can get a better sense of what the game looks like as you get into it a little further. Uh, so can I lower the volume? Diablog, is it, is it loud? Well, that's the music. Uh, let me go ahead and start this because the music is actually, I've got the music turned off once we start the game. Um, so let me go ahead and start and then we'll talk through some of it a little bit. So first of all, uh, historic battles are available on this and right now there's 10 of them, uh, I think is what they said. First Manassas, Wilson's Creek, Pea Ridge, Perryville, Second Manassas, Antietam, Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, Chickamauga, Bentonville. So those are available. There will be another uh, they haven't. I haven't read what it is, but there is another uh, historic battle that will be available when the game uh, goes live on August 21st for people to buy uh, on Steam. And uh, they also say that right now there's just an 1861 and 1862 campaigns, uh, but they are going to add a um, 1863 and 1864 campaign eventually. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that are going to be a little different, but uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. And I'm going to let the opening battle uh, or opening uh, videos play, and they're kind of long. Oh, I just closed the game. That was not what I intended to do there. Let's do this. So um, it's got a lot of great, um, a lot of great immersive features, I guess you could say. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a new Spring 1861 campaign. We'll choose the Union. Uh, you can see it's President James Buchanan to start. And I'm just going to let the video play. Mr. Terry, what's going on? How's it going, my friend? So I'm going to let this all play. So you can see it. It's kind of long, but it's really well worth it. Mr. Terry is a history teacher who does a lot of like reaction videos, but he's also doing gameplay now. He had all his people raid us one day, and it was a lot of fun. He's got a great channel. But I'm telling you right now, guys, I've played this for about an hour. I'm already willing to say it's the best Civil War game ever made for PC. Absolutely. Uh, Zach Mills, thank you, sir. This game's fantastic, and I haven't even started touching the play yet, gameplay. So let's watch the introduction. divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. Abraham Lincoln, June 16, 1858.
Chapter 1 A House Divided So I'll explain the chapters once we get past all of this. The American Civil War Thousands upon thousands of Americans turned against one another. Freeman Gaming, brothers huge grand strategy component brothers. to this, and I'll show you all that in a minute. The bloodiest war America would see. One engulfing the young nation in a maelstrom. Yes, there is education to this, and I like that feature. The Americans are no strangers to war. Yeah, Friedman Gaming, this is Civil War II's successor for sure, masters, but it's so much they better. Fought long and hard for their freedom. To hold true that all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes, William the Conqueror, you're right. Lionheart but Filmworks had a pursuit, lot to do with the videos in this. The Americans have a divine destiny to establish on earth the moral dignity Ryan and agreed. salvation of It's man. good. It's really good. War would be ever present. And you can skip all of this, but it's just giving you some historical immersion here. The manifest destiny calls for expansion. Robert, While the founding father set up the Civil War. Frontier, driving west in search of land. No, this is Beta, Georgia Farman. The Native Americans find themselves pushed across the continent, killing and being killed confined in ever-narrowing territories. So it's gone all the way back to the revolution and kind of bringing us up to speed on where the country is. Novel technology and engineering feats... Lunar Guard, the game will be available for the public on August 21st. I'm not skipping it, Pastor Pinsey. I'm just saying you can. But I'm dying to show you guys this game, so hopefully it goes fast. Canals connect the East Coast and Midwest, followed by railroads and telegraph wires only decades later, revolutionizing the flow of merchandise, news, and people. Native American, I already know but for sure you can Native do that. Americans voluntarily. There is a feature for involving Native Americans on your side. In this game, men owned by other men labor in shackles to feed an insatiable need for cotton and textile mills, bringing marvelous riches to some and comfortless lives to others. These tired, poor, huddled masses yearn to breathe free too, but instead are subject to crack of the whip. Oh, Guillaume, I agree. It's and there's a lot more where and that happiness comes from. Even life are not reserved for all. Coming to mid 19th century, the ever expanding nation is on a brink of rupture. Only a political compromise of 1850 diffuses the tensions between northern free states and southern slave states. 
but this merely delays the march on the road to the inevitable. They've really done their homework in making this game. I'm really impressed. I do not expect the house to fall. But it will cease to be divided. But I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing. Or all the other. But the foundation of the wavering house would turn out to be beyond repair. Soon, blue flags bearing single stars would mark this union, commencing a war that would leave its mark in the Americans for centuries to come. I don't know if that's the end because I skipped it earlier when I played this. But I think that might be the end of the intro. It's about a 10 gigabyte download for the entire game. So here we go. We're into the interface when you start the 1861 campaign. Uh, and there's a lot of really interesting stuff. I'm not going to take the time to go over all of the stuff in the field book, but they definitely go way above and beyond to give you everything you need to learn how to play this game. Uh, they've got tutorial videos right within the game. They walk you through the campaign uh, interface. Uh, they tell you how to win, talk about objectives, finances, policies, economy, army recruitment, uh, all of this stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to skip this for now just because I want to start showing you this game. So anything, anytime anything happens in the game, you get this newspaper that pops up uh, with the current date. Uh, and it tells you kind of what's going on. Uh, and it gives you, again, that historical immersion. Now, first of all, one of the coolest things about this game is the map. Uh, it's completely zoomable. And you can see you start out right here. And right now you can see this is the south. And this is in real time, so it's actually moving right now. You can see it's 123 in the afternoon on February 23rd. So I'm going to pause it for a second so I can show this to you. And, uh, oh, and uh, Mr. Terry... Uh, I live right near where John Brown's family and Ulysses Grant's family got to know each other, which is kind of a cool thing. I just started listening to um, uh, to Grant's memoirs, and he was talking a lot about uh, the Brown family because his dad had some personal connections to them. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this map because you can zoom in as far as you want. You can see the detail level changes. I'm going to zoom in just to where I live up here in northeast Ohio. Alliance isn't real far from me. Uh, but you can see how it changes. You zoom in, and then you start to see uh, things like Cleveland, Ohio. Any place you hover on the map, if you look over here on the right, uh, you can see the support for Union or Confederacy. You can see the current weather uh, in that location. And uh, you, can, you can zoom in all the way down to about here. So I can see right now that here on February 23rd, it's uh, 30, 32 degrees in Pittsburgh. It's clear, 85% union support. Uh, you can zoom down here to Washington, and you can start to see some of that. You can see supply depots, uh, like right here, the Harper's Ferry uh, Armory. You can see Baltimore, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Grant said that, um, uh, Grant actually had some good things to say about the Brown family as a whole. He, he seemed to have been impressed by them, but he also observes that John Brown had to have been insane to think that he was going to get anywhere attacking Harper's Ferry with 20 men and trying to invade the South that way. Um, so, so there's that feature. Now, over here on the right, you have the current, um, eventually, as I'll show you in the 1862 campaign, um, you can, you can see, you'll see the armies over here. Of course, right now, all we have are the garrisons. Uh, so we can see right here the Fort Monroe garrison. Lieutenant Colonel Justin Dimmick, you can see their supplies, their ammunition. Uh, their provisions, what they can forage for, how many guns they have, how many men they have, how many of those men are disabled, what their morale is like, what their situation is, their readiness, their intelligence, their condition, and their training. Um, so yeah, it's a live map of the entire U.S. Lunar Guard. You can zoom in anywhere at any time. Um, so that's really cool. 
Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Niall, we got a lot of people here today. Uh, so that's that. You can also look at the fleets. Uh, and so right now we just have the home squadron, which is right here outside of New York City. Uh, and it's really simple. You can just click on any of these things and you can right click where you want them to go and uh, give them orders. And then you get this option. You can do force march, move at time, retreat, uh, sea movement. And I'll touch on that a little more as we get into it. But there's a lot we've got to cover here. Uh, so let's take a look. Here's the strategy situation. And um, you can see the overall commanders, the highest ranking officers on both sides right now. Uh, yeah, Mr. Terry, John Brown was definitely insane. Um, so um, here's Winfield Scott. Here's uh, PGT Beauregard, who at the moment is the highest level. Uh, you can see the current things that are happening. So if there's a battle that's fought uh, and there's a victor, or if we capture a location, that's going to show up over here. Uh, here's the national morale, the national support, the morale of the armies, the number of loyal states, the number of men in the field, which is next to nothing at the moment uh, because of the date. I'm going to go ahead and start letting it play. The military experience battles won the total casualties and the relations with Europe right now. And overall, that's a federal advantage. Right now, we have one objective. That's going to change. Once we actually get into the war, you'll see there will be a number of objectives here. It might say take Richmond, uh, capture the rail hub at Corinth, things like that. Um, how do we build an army? We haven't gotten to that part yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and start speeding this up just so we can advance through some of the... Uh, yeah, Beauregard, <laughs> he's definitely the most... Uh, he's got that mix of kind of French, but also just Beauregard just sounds Southern. Uh, so there's uh, Jefferson Davis has been elected. So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead. There's also over here, you'll see, uh, this is where you get notifications. So the Pendergast has arrived at the desk. Uh, Pendergast was, that's the fleet that I told to move. So you get this letter and you see how cool it looks. It comes looking like it would in Civil War communication. Uh, so it's super cool. Uh, and so here, to His Excellency the President, my fleet has reached the given objective of zero men and zero guns because it doesn't really have anything at the moment. Morale of the men is eager and they are exhausted. I will carry on according to your instructions that are to none because I didn't give them any instructions as to what to do when they get to that spot. So now you see here, Davis calls for militia, 12-month contracts. Let me stop for a second because that's going to bring me to one of the next features of this game. And that is... Uh, the kind, the policies, and this is kind of like research. Um, so how this works is you get uh, a number of policies that you're able to use, and these affect the game. And you saw that there were chapters. And the way that you enter into the next chapter is by uh, basically researching or unlocking a policy uh, at that chapter. So uh, right now we've got Breadbasket 1 that we can start working on. Um, and I don't, yeah, you can, I think you can click on this to actually see those. So, um, I know there, oh, there we go. We just got to hover over it so we can see what it is. So government funding one with economic policies, the nation's credit rating is improved and new acts for funding the war effort are made available. Improved credit rating allows lower interest in new loans. Uh, so I'll show you the uh, financial aspect to this in just a couple of minutes. Um, but so, yeah, that's going to unlock then the Tariff Act, being able to print money, uh, one and two. Uh, here you have industrialization one. Uh, industrial focus allows higher subsidies to support private corporations and heavy industry, making them more profitable. And I'll show you all of that in just a minute. Um, oh, Lost Brit, you haven't even seen the beginning. I mean, there's a ton of work put into this game. Where do you see all of the commanders that are available? There's like 1,500 of them. Um, yeah, and it's all really done to fit historically. I'm really, really impressed by that. Arming of civilian ships. You can actually get privateers, give letters of mark for privateers to go start hunting Confederate ships. Uh, so here, Military One, we need to start because um, that and then the Militia Act is going to allow us to recruit three months um, uh, troops. Uh, the, the initial uh, regiments that were raised were only for three months service. And then you can go to 12 months, then you can go to 24, then you can go to 36. Uh, over here we have Diplomacy 1. 
uh, with diplomatic focus and policy making, boosting relations with the European superpowers and f- with further subsidies is made possible. This policy also allows the import of Enfield and Lorenz rifles. So you can see even little things like that, like being able to import those new rifles is so cool. I'm telling you guys, you have not seen anything yet uh, for this game. Thank you, Mr. Terry, for doing that. Um, I'm going to put this on auto manage now, uh, for now you can out actually allow that to be auto managed so you don't have to deal with it. Cause I want to so- show you some other things. So here's production. Uh, and where do you see what all there is in production here? Uh, because, um, so what this immediately brings to mind. So my, a lot of my family comes from, um, Eastern Kentucky and one of the most important military actions that took place during the Civil War in Eastern Kentucky was a raid on Saltville, Virginia, which is in the southwest part of the state uh, in 1864, because that salt was uh, being used to fuel uh, the the Confederate war effort. Well, in this game, I can raid Saltville if I want to, because there's coal mines in Shreveport, Louisiana. There's logging camps in Little Rock, Arkansas. There are farms in Fort Smith. There's manufactories in Batesville, Arkansas. There's plantations. And every one of these things can be taken out by your armies, can be, can be raided. The slave ratio here, uh, you can see that. You can see what they are producing for the Confederate cause. Uh, I can also look at the uh, stuff for the Union. This is right now showing everything uh, because, uh, you know, Tennessee, Louisiana, Arkansas are still part of the Union at this point. So they're showing on the Union side. But I could see the Confederate ones if I want to. Uh, So these are all things that exist in the game and can be captured, can be destroyed, can be raided, uh, and can impact directly the Confederate economy. So that's really cool. Here's goods and trade. You can see what the prices are like for artillery right now, what our demand is for artillery, for coal, uh, what's in the markets. So all of this, this is why I talk about it being uh, a reminding me of Victoria, too, because of the the depth of the economic uh, aspect of this game. So I apologize, guys, if I'm not catching up with the chat. I'm just so focused on showing you the game right now that I haven't really... um, kind of looked at the chat, but I'm trying to look at it a little bit. But as you can, you can sense from me, I'm so unbelievably excited about this game. Um, So uh, we looked at strategy already. Uh, Here's military. So this is where you can go through your armies, which there really aren't any at the moment, because we haven't gotten to that part of the war. Let me go ahead and, and start the game back up again. I'll put it on 10 times speed. Um, so you can see here, here's the Fort Sumter garrison, and this is the, the level of depth that is happening here. You've got Major Robert Anderson who commanded the fort, and underneath him, a lot of people don't know this, but Abner Doubleday, who ended up a general later in the war, was a captain. He, I think he was the second in command at Fort Sumter. Uh, so and you can see they've got 88, men's and six, 88 men and six, six guns. Uh, you can see Abner Doubleday's from New York. Uh, here's, now, check this out. This is really cool as well. Every single one of these commanders in the game has these details. You can see his current rank. And the the way that promotion works in the game, you don't actually promote them directly. What you do is you put them into a position where they'll receive a promotion. So, um, oh, here we go. Secession. Once hey, there's Alexander Stevens. Can never be recalled. We and our posterity shall see our lovely South desolated by the demon of war. Alexander Stevens, Vice President of the Confederate States of America. Chapter 2. The Demon of War. The election of Abraham Lincoln an anti-slavery Republican as the 16th President of the United States was the last straw triggering secession. One by one, Southern slave states declared secession from the Union and formed the Confederate States of America, led by President Jefferson Davis. This secession ignited the inevitable escalation, with fruitless efforts to still find a political compromise falling on deaf ears. Advocates of There's John Brown and fire eaters roam the states with without his beard eyes and the public is aroused to volunteer to fill the ranks to quell the rebellion and to preserve the Union or to secure independence from it. 
following. Yeah, you can tell John Brown was insane President by looking Lincoln's at him. Militia call for 75,000 volunteers for three months service sparks incredulous protest and loud outcry among the southern states. And these sparks set on fire the irreversible. More states to see. Now it's war. Now it's war. 75,000, 100,000, and even more. Soon, the largest armies seen on American soil muster... Mr. Terry, that's one of my all-time favorite quotes from Lincoln. War, I love that one. A war that is to be neat, short, and limited. The whole matter would be settled by Christmas. But a dark shadow would loom over the growing and inexperienced armies. Without a swift and decisive blow from the very offset of the war... Yeah, guys, definitely check out Mr. Terry's channel. He's got a lot of great stuff. And disorganizing civil war, and even foreign powers may feel a desire to take a hand therein. The time is ticking for the newborn Confederacy. The Union must act. The demon of war has awakened. Okay, so... Anyway, as I was saying, you can look at somebody like Abner Doubleday, and let me just slow down the simming for a little bit, uh, and you can see he's currently a captain. Now, if I put him in command of a brigade, he's going to get a promotion. I believe that's how this works. I haven't really gotten to that, but from reading, uh, Commander Thorne, no, I do not, uh, just bachelors. Um, but you can see here that he uh, his main focus is in artillery. So if I do promote him, it's good for me to probably promote him in an area where he'll have influence over artillery. Uh, you can see he's a veteran of the Mexican-American War. And here we see he's a graduate of West Point. Now he's got insignificant fame. He's active in initiative, inspiring in leadership, good administrator, and predictable in terms of uh, what he does in the field. And that's important because we're going to talk about how the interface works between your generals and how realistic it is and how I really like that. Um, you can also see here uh, when he got his promotion to lieutenant, when he was promoted to captain. Uh, hey, Lost Brit, take care. Uh, so that just shows you a little bit of that. And you can cycle through every one of your garrisons and armies and see who those people are. Um, and those those newspaper things are popping up because we're unlocking things uh, in the uh, in the policies area. So British interventions at 20% right now. Uh, are your restrictions on ability to name generals, political connections? Uh, yeah, generals can get upset if you remove them from command. There are also rivalries, and I'll talk about that. Um, so if you have two generals that are on the field at the same time and they develop a rivalry between each other on the same side, that will affect whether or not they follow orders. Uh, and whether or not they kind of just do their own thing. So you could have a Dan Sickles situation where you give Dan Sickles an order to hold Cemetery Ridge and he moves out to the Peach Orchard. That can happen on this game. So here are our currently available officers at the ranks that they're at. Uh, and you can actually go all the way down to lieutenant. You've got 585 lieutenants right now. So you've got there's Captain William T. Sherman, for example. Uh, Captain Israel B. Richardson. And, you know, a lot of these guys did start the war as lower-ranking officers. Right now, our only major generals uh, are uh, Robert Patterson, George Cadwallader, uh, Charles Sanford, and Winfield Scott. So, um, yeah, I paused it. Um, we'll go ahead and keep it going. And what I'm going to end up doing here uh, in just a couple minutes is I'm going to jump to the 1862 campaign so I can start to show you the armies in the field because it takes a while in the 1861 campaign to get to the place where you start having uh, armies in the field. Um, so here's here's a cool thing too. I can sort the arm the officers by state. So if I just want to see all the guys from Ohio, here's all the guys from Ohio. Um, Nelson, I don't know why it would think I'm playing Risk. That's really strange. But um, yeah, Hendricks, it's kind of funny about Sickles. Sickles is probably the only guy who ever got court-martialed and received the Medal of Honor for the exact same act <laughs> day of fighting. Um, so, yeah. So here are all the guys from Ohio. Uh, we've got George W. Morgan, who's a colonel. We've got Don Carlos Buell. We've got Irvin McDowell. There's Sherman, uh, Crook, Gilbert, McClellan. I don't really claim McClellan as being from Ohio. Um, 
but you're going to see Grant down here eventually. I don't think we have him quite yet. I think he started out as a colonel at the beginning of the war. Um, but anyway, oh, there's Custer. Uh, so there you have that. That's just kind of a cool feature where you can sort all of them by what state they're from. Up here, uh, you have the rail transport capacity, your river ship capacity, sea transport ship capacity, uh, and then various information about your manpower and your finances going on. Um, show Minnesota. I can show you Minnesota, Zachary. So let's zoom out. Minnesota's kind of on the frontier at this time. So there's Minnesota. And St. Paul, you know, is only a, a one victory point city right now. All right, so here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to skip ahead because uh, I want to be able to show you armies in the field uh, and show you the actual battle interface and all of that because it's, it's so cool. It just really is really cool. Um, so let's start an 1862 campaign. And again, you can do some things here at the beginning. You can give a bonus to the AI on the uh, Confederate side if you don't think it's hard enough. Uh, you can choose the aggressiveness of the AI, and you can also choose up to three pre-war policies uh, that impact things, uh, the overall thing. So right now we have Underground Railroad, uh, which says support an abolitionist underground organization to help fugitive slaves from the South prevent capture. Available slave workforce in slave states is reduced yearly. So by choosing the Underground Railroad, I'm hurting the Confederate economy at the start. Uh, Kansas is a free state. You've got Go West. So you've got all these pre-war policies that you can choose. There's alliance with the natives. Uh, approach the Native Americans to ally with them against the Southern Rebellion. This policy will increase Northern support in Indian territory considerably, allowing recruitment in from the Indian tribes living there. So that's really cool as well. Mark, I'm glad you're able to catch a stream. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll take a look, uh, Yates, and see uh, if it extends that far west. I'm pretty sure that it does. So spring 1862, you can see the size of the armies to start. Um, we're going to go ahead and start this. So I want to take an army into the field and show you how you move armies, how you can switch uh, core between armies. Like I can take, I could take a core from the Army of the Potomac, send it west to fight with Grant if I want to. Uh, it's really cool. Mr. Beat, this is a Grand Tactician Civil War. It might, no, I'm, I'm not going to say might be. It is. After a couple of hours of, of playing with this game, I can already say it's the best Civil War game that's ever been made. And it just came out today for streamers, it's, uh, for YouTubers. Uh, it's going to be available to everybody on August 21st on Steam. So I just love the historical immersion. I love the background it gives you. I love how much detail, uh, how much care has gone into making sure that this game was done right. Sib Wolf, it should be on, uh, in fact, I know it's on Steam. You can add it to the wish list on Steam, and it'll be out on uh, August 21st for everybody to play. This step, secession, once taken, So we saw this, this video already. Recalled. We and our posterity shall see our lovely South desolated by the demon of war. Alexander Stevens, Vice President. By the way, can I just Federal comment and States say that America. the guy who plays Alexander Stevens in the movie Lincoln looks just Chapter like two. him? The Demon of War. Grant and Sherman are already out west in 1862, Zachary. You'll see that in a minute. An anti slavery Republican as the 16th President of the United States was the last straw triggering secession. One by one. So we already saw this, so we'll go ahead and skip. Secession. Uh, skip this so we can kind of get moving here. Uh, so we are into 1862 now. It's March 4th of 1862. And let me show you. Now you can see over here, we've got the Army of the Southwest under Samuel Curtis uh, sitting right here in the northwest part of Arkansas. And we can zoom all the way into that army if we want to. And I'll just show you how this works. So uh, it, there's fog of war in place. Georgia Farman, this does make Ultimate General Civil War seem like child's play. Ultimate General Civil War has better graphics in, in the battle phase. Um, that's about the best thing I can say about it. Uh, Brian, how's it going, man? But uh, 
Uh, yes, Grant is a general at this point, Colin, in 1862, because Grant, uh, in fact, Grant was already a major general by this point, because uh, at this point, March 4th, he's already taken Fort Donelson, uh, and he's moving on Shiloh. So he's in command of the Army of, uh, Army of the Tennessee at this point. So if I click on the Army of the Southwest, and I can see my information about it, in, including the fact that a thousand men are disabled at you know, any given moment, you can kind of see how many men are actually available for combat, how many guns they have, what their supply situation is, all of this stuff. So now I can give orders. So let's say I want the Army of the Southwest uh, to, we're going to sidestep the Army of the West, and we're going to go for Carrollton, Arkansas. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them an order to go ahead, I'm just going to right click. Now it's going to take 4 minutes and 49 seconds for the orders to be dispatched to the Army of the Southwest and then they'll start moving. Uh, now in that I can give other orders, I can give a stance order. So I can tell them to be defensive, offensive, I can give cavalry orders uh, like scout, raid, or guard. I can order construction of a fort, of a supply depot, of telegraph lines. <laughs> which is just, just, it's so cool. Um, movement order, stop, forced march if I want them to go fast. I can manage the army. So let me click on that screen. So here's the army of the Southwest. Uh, here are the divisions. And this is where I can kind of manage. I can shift brigades around from one place to another if I want to. So I could just transfer this unit over to this other brigade. It's really simple to just drag and drop uh, if I want to. And it takes time to do that. Um, you can see, you can't just do it and have it happen automatically. Armies don't just say, okay, poof, now you're part of this brigade. Paperwork's got to be done. Things got to happen. So you can see, I'm transferring them that brigade to another division, but it's going to take a day for that to happen. Um, uh, Yates, you, you actually ask a really good question about the tactical maps, and you're going to see that um, in just a minute. Yeah, so here, you can see in the order of, the, order of battle, uh, and everything's done at the brigade level. Uh, in the armies. So you can see this brigade has Springfield rifled mus muskets, but guess what? We can upgrade those. So we can click on upgrade and we can see all of the available weapons that we can choose from. And we can say, okay, you know what? I'd like to really give them, um, I don't know, Enfields. Uh, and you can see the difference between those uh, different kind of guns. Uh, they're only available um, from production and import. Uh, Lorenzes are only available from import. You can see the cost uh, of the number of guns that we need for this unit. Uh, it's going to cost $343,000 to equip an entire brigade with Lorenz rifles. Uh, you can see the rate of fire, the effective range. Uh, so really cool feature of the game. Uh, anyway, about the maps. So right now, they don't have... Uh, so for example... If I engage an army, uh, let's say 30 miles from Shiloh on here, it's going to use the Shiloh battlefield to fight the battle uh, because in this early access version, it doesn't have kind of like dynamic uh, fictional battlefields. It only uses the historic battlefields. So it's going to plop you down. If I, if I attack Harper's Ferry, it's probably going to use the, the Antietam battlefield map. It's not going to be that way in the final game. And it does tell you that. Uh, they do tell you that at the beginning when you first get into the game. That um, I believe by the time it comes out to early access on August 21st, they're going to have those maps. So it'll be on fictional battlefields rather than on the Shiloh battlefield or the Bull Run battlefield. Uh, so you will have that feature, which you don't currently have right now. Um, so are generals like Franz Siegel here more likely to disobey orders than other generals? Yes. That is a feature of this game. There are delays in orders. There are generals who will disregard your orders. Uh, you can tell generals to take initiative, which I'll show you in a minute when we get into a battle. Um, so let's go ahead and just cycle through a few more. There's John Pope's Army of Mississippi. Uh, there's uh, Burnside with the Coast Division. Here's the Army of the Potomac, 98,000 strong. Um, and again, you can look at each of these divisions and you can see the general. And if I want to replace a general, okay, 5th Corps is currently uh, commanded by Alpheus Williams, but we want to replace him. We can now see who's available that we can replace him with. Uh, we can replace him with kind of a lateral replacement, a, a, a major general. Uh, and these are the people that are currently not doing anything else, like Henry Halleck, or we can promote somebody. So if we want to get the Rock of Chickamauga and assign him, 
uh, George Thomas is now assigned uh, to take on. Actually, it looks like Nathaniel Banks took over there. I don't know why that happened. Um, so we could go, okay, Henry Halleck, assign him there. So now he's in charge of the Fifth Corps. So you can see, you can also create a new army uh, out of what's available. And right now we can see, I'm sorry if I'm diving around a lot, guys. Uh, the game comes out August 21st, and it'll be out in less than two weeks. Um, but yeah, for those of you who just joined number one, if you would hit that like button, I would greatly appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for that as well. I will be doing a full campaign on this game, probably multiple campaigns. Uh, probably start later today or early tomorrow. I'm not going to start my campaign in this live stream. I'm mainly just kind of showing off the game. Uh, but I will be starting a campaign later today uh, and getting it uploaded probably first thing tomorrow. Grant right now is in command of the Army uh, of the Tennessee, and you'll see that. But So here's the current number of men that are fielded from each army out of my 225,000. You can actually see exactly how many men are from Maine out of that amount. Here's the recruits that are available uh, from each of those places. So let's say, okay, we're going to recruit the 26th Army, and we can rename it. We can change it to something else. Uh, and then you can start to create your new army uh, and assign units to it. Uh, we're not going to do that right now because I want to give, uh, uh, take an opportunity to actually look at a battle here. Uh, but that gives you a little bit. Hey, Mr. Terry, take care, man. Who is developing this game? Um, let me take a look at my email and I can tell you exactly who that is. It's a uh, it's an independent developer, I believe. But man, they have put so much work into this. I'm uh, incredibly impressed uh, by that. So let me, um, um, maybe somebody else can answer that for me. Uh, it actually doesn't even say in the email. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, their mailing address is actually, or their address, I think they're a foreign company actually. Uh, so you can see here, let's go ahead and hit play. Uh, the timer will start ticking down. Uh, the order is on the way for the Army of the Southwest, and they're going to start moving toward Carrollton, Arkansas. Let's go ahead and move out, uh, move over here now, because I want to take a look at Grant, because people keep asking about Grant. Uh, he's up here at Fort Donaldson. He's just taken Fort Donaldson, and now uh, it's time for him to move on Shiloh. Uh, so historically what he was after was he was headed down here for Corinth, Mississippi. There's a rail hub there. You can see where the railroads come together, and that could really put a hurt on the Confederates. Uh, yeah, Oliver Keppel Mueller. That's right. That's exactly who the guy is. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and give Grant orders to go ahead and, and move on the first corps over here. And what we can do here is we can give the order, but then we can we can decide we can tell him delay that order until a certain time. So if we want to time multiple armies moving all at once, we can do that. Um, we can do a forced march. We can do river movement, sea movement, or rail movement. Now, I believe if I don't... Uh, see, these are actually highlighted. So if I do that, that actually turns it off so he can't do that. Where it stands right now, the default is that they will use whatever means necessary, whatever makes the most sense. So if Grant wants to, to move by river, he'll move by river. If he wants to move by rail, he'll move by rail. Uh, but I can I can tell him not to use certain areas. But um, so now let's go ahead and we'll watch that unfold. And then when they get close, a battle will probably develop. And I can let that auto resolve or I can actually dive in to actually fighting that battle. Um, it's actually pretty cold right now. And I think we should have Buell's army over here in Nashville. We do, the Army of the Ohio. So he's got 18,000 men there. Now, historically, both of those converged and fought at the Battle of Shiloh. I'm going to go ahead and mu move Buell down here to Waynesboro and get him going there, and we'll let that happen. Now, let me show you some of the overlay on the map so you can kind of see some of the other key features to the map. You can see things. Oh, we get the music. As soon as you zoom out all the way, you get the music. Uh, yes, there is naval combat on this game. Um, so let me go ahead and show you. Each one of those flags is where there's uh, there are troops. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the navies for a minute. 
There's our North Atlantic Blockading Squadron. And if we wanted to, we could send them, uh, I don't know, somewhere like Norfolk. So here's Warden's Command. We'll actually send them. Uh, oh, he doesn't have any ships, so that doesn't do any good. So there's 14 ships with 63 guns here. Um, so we'll go ahead and just tell them to start moving in toward and we'll take on the James River Squadron. How's that? You can see fighting's actually taking place here right now. They're bombarding Fortress on the And you can see they're starting to move. Now I've got a couple of uh, telegraphs here. Curtis has arrived at his destination with uh, 9,587 Now here's uh, something I want to show you. You can actually change in the options the font that's being used. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by the historic fonts, because right now we're, we're actually not using historical fonts. So glorious victory at Shiloh. We didn't actually get to fight the victory at Shiloh, the battle at Shiloh, because I believe what happened was this Confederate Corps just retreated as soon as we got within range for fighting. Uh, no, right now there's no limited campaign. You just play the full campaign. So, if we want to here, we can actually, um, I think, go ahead and actually fight this battle. And since Shiloh's the nearest historic battlefield, that's why it's going to right now make this the Battle of Shiloh. But eventually, it'll make it a separate battle. Yeah, Pastor Pinsy, I, uh, I had the music playing through my speakers when it started. Uh, the music is actually not supposed to be on. I thought I had to turn it off. It is on. It's kind of weird. Let's go ahead and just turn the sound off. Right I don't know why it's so loud. There must be something on here. There we go. All right, let me know if it's better now, guys. There's not supposed to be music. I really don't know why there's music playing right now. Yeah, uh, keep in mind, guys, that when you um, when you say something to me, there's about a 15 second delay between what I'm recording and what you're saying, uh, what you're seeing. I don't know why the music is still playing. I guess there's. Not a lot I can do about that at the moment. But there, the first core has taken off. They are running. Yeah, I don't know if you can name battles or if the battles get automatically named based on where they are. So let's go ahead and start moving the Army of the Potomac as well so that we can get, um, get a battle going because I want to show you guys how the battles unfold and what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and tell McClellan to start moving, and then we're going to hope that it happens. Now, these are just our invasions that are happening. Yeah, I have it set high, but I also have it set to off. So it shouldn't be playing at all. So I don't, yeah, let's take a look. We'll go ahead and slide the music slider down, I guess, too. But you can see here I have it clicked to off, so it shouldn't be playing at all. Okay. Um, let's see. How long have I been going? 48 minutes. We're going to go for quite a while yet because we're going to fight a battle. Um, so let's zoom in and see. Like there's bridges and things that can be destroyed. There's all kinds of fun stuff like that. So let's move the 5th Corps over here toward Har uh, Winchester and Harper's Ferry. And then we're going to st uh, start telling the Army of the Potomac. Uh, to move on the Army of Virginia here at Manassas Junction. And then we'll let that stuff unfold, and hopefully we'll get a battle going. Yes, uh, Cal Clyde, uh, it'll take a little while after the stream ends for everything to kind of be generated. Uh, but this video will be live on YouTube, and you can go back and watch it later. Yeah, Sasha, you're about right. No, McClellan, probably. Can I have Curtis attack in Arkansas? Yeah. So a small battle, we can certainly do that. Hopefully we'll get the 5th Corps attacking Jackson's Corps uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. And that'll get us a battle going there. 
Uh, but there are a few other places that we can do that. And it looks like Curtis, I think he's arrived. Uh, we can look up here at our uh, telegrams. So Grant's at his destination. Here's the results of the Battle of Shiloh. Uh, the reason I didn't get to fight it is because you can see here there were only two men killed um, because the Confederates just retreated right away. If they had not done that, then we would have had the option to auto-resolve or to actually fight the battle. So we're going to get the Army of the Southwest uh, moving here toward the Army of the West. And it's going to take a little time for him to receive those orders. Are there supply lines and can we see them? Yes and yes. Uh, so let me remember how to do that. Here we go, here's the map overview. So here's the map information setting. So if you wanna see, so here, here's a couple things. Here are telegraph lines. So right now we only have telegraph lines running from Boston down through New York, uh, Philadelphia and to Washington. But eventually we can run those telegraph lines anywhere else that we want to. Uh, so here are supply lines then, and I don't know why this has frozen on me. Oh, because I'm doing the quick overview map. There we go. So let's see supply lines if we can. It doesn't appear to be showing anything. Yeah, the Battle of Shiloh, the bloodiest battle with two casualties. But yeah, supply is a thing. And another thing that's cool too, and hopefully I'll get a chance to show you this. Um, if you fight a multi-day battle, there are opportunities to see the supply situation changing from one day to the next. So looks like that core has moved down to Corinth. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and tell Grant to move on Corinth. You can see that he's got the Army of Mississippi there and he's moving his Army of Tennessee toward Corinth as well. That could be, yeah, maybe we need to select a specific unit to show the supply line. Yeah. Um, so there you have, you can see where supplies are coming from. They're coming from, right now, from the Fort Hyman Garrison, Fort Donaldson Garrison. They're not coming from these ways, I don't think. Does the border change? Yes, I believe it does. Grant at destination, Halleck at destination. Um, so it looks like the Fifth Corps has arrived where they meant they were meant to. I'm going to try to get a battle going for you guys here so you can see that. And I'd rather do it in a campaign than go to a historic battle. We'll definitely get one if we march on Corinth. Yes, bull party. And you'll see once we get into a battle, you'll be able to click on any one of your brigades and see in real time how much ammunition they have, how many rounds they have left. Um, that's one of the cool features about this. Okay. So his first corps has dropped back there now. So we are going to get a battle. And I'm trying to remember exactly how we select that battle to make it happen. I think we're just waiting for the Army of the Ohio to arrive. You can see Grant's taking rail right now to get here a little faster. Uh, you, can, you can issue orders uh, at the Army level and down. All the historic fonts, I'll show you that when we get into a battle because that's where that comes into play. Is once we get into the battle and you can start looking at all the different uh, detailed screens on your, on your Army. That's where you can change the fonts and see things as they would have been written or the way that you want to see them. Here we go. All right, so I don't know why it's not showing this battle. There may be a setting I need to change because I did this earlier and it, and it gave me the option to fight the battle. Because once the battle started, I should have been able to click on it and actually enter into that battle. So let me go ahead, I'll drop out for a second because I want to show you a battle because it's a whole game in and of itself.
So let's do a historical battle. Let's do... Let's go ahead and do Gettysburg. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes about Meade. That is a cool shot of what looks like Antietam. I believe that's the Antietam battlefield and it's colorized, it's really cool. Was the first Minnesota recruited by now? Absolutely, they were one of the earliest regiments in the war. So now we'll show you the battle uh, interface and how this all works. I did see the tutorials they did online. Yes, P Ridge is a battle that you can do. So now this is cool. We get to fight the Battle of Gettysburg and we'll start by controlling Buford's division uh, on McPherson Ridge. And you'll see even when we start that you'll, you'll already be able to see exactly where the first Corps is. So here are our initial orders. General Orders 194 by direction of the President, Major General Joseph Hooker is relieved from command of the Army of the Potomac, and Major General George G. Meade is appointed to the command of that army and of the troops temporarily assigned to duty with it by order of the Secretary of War. Uh, and then we have Meade giving us orders, or giving us information. So now here, this is where I was talking about, um, yeah, you are. You can make the battles where you're in control the entire game. You can you can do just grand strategy and let the battles fight themselves, or you can dive in and fight all of the strategy of the battle itself. Dread Minion, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, Dread Minion, from what I've I've only heard from um, the historical gamer who I know streamed the game this morning, and then myself, and I know we both have really enjoyed it. I absolutely love it. Um, so if I change to historical fonts. Here's what this stuff looks like. You can see now it looks like handwriting. Uh, I personally prefer not to use the historical fonts, but I can see why some folks would want to. So here are all the reports, and these are available at any point during a battle. You can always read these. Um, the description still says risk. I don't know why it's doing that. Somebody else mentioned that. But um, because mine shows Grand Tactician. So I can look at it. So this is all that's available right now to me. Um, oh, I, this is Robert E. Lee. This is the Army of Northern Virginia. I want the Union. All right. So first core. So uh, if I want to look at condition report, uh, strength report, let's look at that. So here's the first core. Here are the number of infantry in each of the divisions of the first core. How much uh, how many men are in the artillery? Who's available? Aggr aggregate on last return. This updates in real time during the battle, so I can see the casualty rates, uh, things of that nature. I can see the combat reports here. Casualties inflicted, prisoners taken. Um, but I'll go back and look at all of those once we've actually fought some of the battle. So this is your overall battle screen. And just like before, you can zoom in at any point. So let me zoom into the first core because I want to make sure that I'm giving them orders to get to me as quickly as possible. So I'm going to go to Reynolds and all of the troops that are under his command down there, and I'm going to give them orders to uh, get into position up here. And they will uh, follow the best route, which right now is to follow the road unless I tell them otherwise. James Watson's going great, my friend. How are you? Um, so then I can zoom all the way down. And you even see the sun just rising in the west, which is kind of weird. Um, it should be rising behind me, not in front of me, but that's okay. Um, so it's 6.30 in the morning on July 1st. You can see here that my troops are still mounted. Uh, so let's go ahead and give Devin orders to go there. Uh, and again, there's a delay because uh, what's happening here is that... Uh, General Buford is issuing these orders. Actually, there's Pleasanton because that's the chain of command. Um, but Buford's giving orders, and so it, it, there's time that passes um, for you to give those orders and for those things to happen. I can give orders at the division level if I want to, so if I want to click on the whole division and give them orders at once, I can. Uh, I can also give initiative orders. So I can tell General Buford, for example, move uh, to this location, but take initiative. So Let's say, and you'll see this happen, uh, let's say I give him orders to move right here to Forney. 
but he sees a Confederate force over here. He can take initiative if he thinks it's to his advantage and attack that Confederate force without me giving him a direct order to do so. Um, yeah, that's the number of men manning the guns. Uh, but I can also tell them not to do that. Now, uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, why did he just drop back there? We've got some time before the Confederates get here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to Gamble's 1st Brigade. And you can see they've got 60 rounds of ammunition for their Sharps carbines. Uh, they're in great condition. Thank you, James. Appreciate that. Um, now I can tell these guys on the cavalry orders to dismount. So we're going to click on mounting. And that's going to tell them to dismount. Because one of the things you're going to see is that they have these perks. And they have the, the perk Stormer 1, which is these troopers prefer fighting dismounted using a loose formation similar to skirmishers and moving fast like light infantry. Yes, Hendricks, you can give the orders at any level. Um, so if I zoom all the way out and I give orders, uh, I can give orders to just the Iron Brigade, for example, or I can give orders to Wadsworth's division, or I can give it to Reynolds for his entire corps. Um, and you'll see that chain of command showing up on the battlefield. And I don't have to tell General Reynolds to move. He will do that based on where it makes sense for him to be on the battlefield, based on where his troops are. Um, Pat, I have not found the game to be super laggy so far. Uh, we'll see if that's true when, the, when it gets a little further. It doesn't feel sluggish to me. I don't know if maybe it's just coming across that way on the video. Uh, let's go ahead and get the 2nd Brigade dismounted. Now, I can also give them additional orders. So, for example, right now, um, none of this other stuff. I can tell them to lay down if I want to. Um, I can give my commander specific orders. Like, I can turn off initiative, like I told you. So, I can tell him, don't take any initiative. Only do what I commanded you to do. Nothing more than that. Um, you can use the roads or you can not use the roads. Uh, you can use high ground whenever possible. Uh, so instruct the commander to deploy on high ground if possible. So if I send him to a particular area, he will automatically find the best spot uh, on high ground. It is laggy to you guys because, yeah, it definitely should not be. Uh, I'm not feeling any lag right now. So then use cover, same thing. I can also give them orders to start digging in. Uh, so build breastworks. I don't know if that's necessarily a, an idea that's even possible for us right now. Um, but build breastworks right there. Build them, guys. Go. So you can't really see the breastworks, um, but you can see where I can issue the orders to, to build those. So I'm still learning the interface for all of this. And there's the movement interface. We can tell them to stop. We can tell them double time, etc. Uh, let me try this again because I'm not entirely sure how the breastwork function works. And whether or not they'll do that automatically. So they've got marrow carbines. Longstream spams high ground futility. <laughs> Hendrix, you win quote of the day, my friend. That was good. Uh, Pat Pat, you can get the game on August 21st on Steam. It'll be available, and it will have more features than what you can see right now. There's a few things that aren't in this beta mode that will be available when the game is in early release on August 21st. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I w the one and only thing that I would give the advantage to Ultimate General Civil War is the graphics, but this there's so much depth to this and so much variety to it that... I have no problem with the graphics the way it is. Yes, Archer's Brigade is here, assuming that's who he chooses to lead with, which it might not be in this case. So that's just um, Gamble saying that they've taken McPherson Ridge. 7.02 in the morning, and we're getting our first glimpse of the Confederates. It's funny it says Heath's Brigade because it's actually Heath's division. I didn't show in the campaign screen the... Um, the, the objectives that it gives you. But let's go ahead and go to headquarters for a second here. Um, 
again, you can look at your order of battle. There's our whole order of battle. There's the first core, second core, third core, etc. And the ones that are showing up as blue are the ones that are currently on the battlefield and available, uh, which is just Reynolds um, First Division under Wadsworth, and then of course uh, Buford's Cavalry Brigade. Yeah, I got I, I got to remember that you actually have to click off of things to turn them off. You can't just kind of like yeah. So I have to click order of battle again to make the order of battle go away. Yeah, so you can start to see the enemy coming in. And again, like I said, you can zoom out to get the tactical view. So now I can see there's Brock and Bros uh, brigade coming in first, Pettigrew, Archer, and Davis behind. So that's all of Heath's division coming in. And where's my artillery? I should have moved them up a little further. Now let me show you artillery as well because there are different orders you can give to your artillery. You can give, uh, obviously, limbering and unlimbering. Uh, and then there, are, you can tell them to do counter battery fire. You can tell them to fire at will, uh, or you can tell them to bombard a particular target. Yeah, so Hendrix, that's a good point. Brockenborough uh, is commanding Heath's brigade, even though it's not under Heath's direct control because he's the division commander. So that's a good call. So it looks like so far he's waiting. He's just out of range. Hopefully if I get my artillery up here, and you can see the little squiggly line with the bugle here. What that's telling you is um, the range, the, the orders range that we have available to us, uh, depending on where my general is at any given moment. And right now there's General Buford right there. And you can see here the range of my guns. 9,000 men you were done for. Yeah, but you know what? I have um, repeating rifles, and they don't. And hopefully we can hold long enough. And we could even lay down if we want to. Kind of late for that, I guess, but we could give lay down orders. Which is kind of cool. Uh, is there friendly fire? I don't know yet. I guess we're going to find out. I would assume there is, because they've done so much to get the detail right on everything else. So our guns have started firing. So now we can issue, we can say, uh, fire at will, counter battery fire, or bombardment. Uh, I'm actually going to start with counter battery fire for a little bit here, just so we can kind of hopefully maybe take out his guns, if he has any. He's waiting. No, his guns aren't quite here yet. He's waiting to get his whole division in line before he attacks me, which is not historically what the Confederates did which bothers me a little bit. I, I don't mean it bothers me in that they're doing it, or that the game allows it. It bothers me because it's going to mess me up for my strategy. I'm glad they do that because I don't want them to do exactly what they did historically. So we're seeing uh, Wadsworth's division slowly moving into position, and eventually as the day progresses, you'll see the other units arrive. Here they come. So let's go ahead now and get the artillery, get Caliph's battery firing at will. And not just for, uh, counter battery fire. Oh, I, I turned off fire at will. Now I gotta wait because I can't issue another order right away. So looking at the interface, let me show you a few things about this now. Um, Right here, we see the situation, and this tells us that they're supported and that they're within range of the commander. And then other things will happen as well if they're being fired on from their flanks, things like that. They have, uh, we have the high ground because they've got to, they're going to attack, they're going to dip down into this valley and then start coming up the hill on McPherson Ridge. I don't know if we can fire while we're laying down. I'm still waiting for him to attack me.
All right, fire at will, boys. Yeah, Mr. Allegra, and remember, too, you have to plan for the delay in giving orders. You know, you give an order to a brigade, it doesn't automatically start carrying that order out. You've got to get those orders to that brigade commander first. And then you have to account for the fact that sometimes they won't do it. As I mentioned at the top of the, the video, there is a rivalry feature to this game. I don't know if we're going to fire if we're laying down. So we're probably going to need to stand up. Oh, we did fire while laying down. But let's go ahead and stand up and start fighting. Oh, we want to be in loose order too. Because they like firing. They like fighting that way. As it told me. He's coming at me with melee combat already. But I've got these repeating rifles that I hope are going to really kind of hold. He's bunched up all in one spot here. So you can see Gamble's lost only four men so far. Oh yeah, Hendrix, this is not going to be like Ultimate General Civil War where you can wipe out a whole army. They would never allow that to happen. They would retreat before that happens. I believe the game is going to be $35 or $40 when it comes out. Worth every penny. I'm saying it right now. So here comes Heath's Brigade. They're going to come at me. Now, while all this is happening, we can look at reports. Uh, so, for example, let's look at... the. Oh, here's our objectives. Uh, McPherson Ridge, Cashtown Road, Fairfield Road, Oak Hill, Her, uh, Her Ridge... Uh, so let's look at our morning report, and we can see the strength report right here, and that's what we had at the beginning. Um, we want to look, we want to go back out because we're looking at the cavalry corps now. Uh, so so far, 12 killed, 49 wounded, 10 missing, total of 71 casualties, um, and that'll update in real time as things go along. All right, back to the battle. Oh, drummer for life. I am so excited for this game, too. Yes, Panda Kraut is the one who made those great mods for the General Civil War. So we've already lost 83 men in Devon's Brigade. Davis is Mississippi. And so this is already a historical in that when Heath's division attacked, they didn't attack with all four brigades at one time. Enemy forces from Davis's brigade have most unfortunately gained control over McPherson Ridge held by us previously. Should we mount a counterattack to take it back? Comes from William Gamble. So we've retaken it. All right, it looks like Devin's already fallen back. So we did not hold nearly as long as what happened historically. They lost 169 men already. Yes, you can you can raise regiments, you can raise brigades, armies. All right, so here's where are they at? They're still a little ways off. All right, Wadsworth, you're going to have to get there sooner, man, cuz these guys are already breaking. So we're going to give him new orders to form up right here. Actually, right up here, if we can. All right. Get there fast, boys. Devin is just running for his life right now. Gamble's hanging on. How's the game determine victory or defeat in the battle? I think it's based on those victory points, holding the various things on the map. Mark, like when Dick Winters got promoted. Yeah, typing up reports. So I want I'm curious to see how we're doing on inflicting casualties. Um, oh, see, you can cycle through units here too, so that's kind of cool. 
Man, Gamble's got to be mad that Devin just up and ran like that. And you can see there that it's showing now that he's not supported like he was before. But they're buying time for the infantry to get up. Oh yeah, he is trying to get around my flank. So they had actually built, it looks like, some... Or they were starting to build the fortifications. All right, they're cutting across now. They're cutting over on uh, up Seminary Ridge. You can see the Iron Brigade right here. Let's take a look at those boys. No black hats, but that's okay. We'll forgive them for that. Move faster. You can tell them what kind of formation to form as well, which is cool. You can rally with uh, with your commander. I probably should have done that with Buford to try and rally Devon's brigade before they fell back. But Gamble's hanging on. He's only lost 65 men. If you fight near the buildings, they can catch fire. Nice. I'm still shooting his cannons. I don't know why they're doing that. Probably because they can't fire past these guys. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop the guns back to near the seminary. What's the scale? I don't really know exactly how they do the scale. But man, Gamble, he is fighting well. I want to look at the report because I want to see how many casualties he's actually caused. Let's go ahead into the Cavalry Corps, 1st Division. So here's present for duty. Combat report, here we go. Casualties inflicted, look at that. We've actually caused 1,300 casualties. <laughs> So we're doing 1,381. So we're doing our job with those guns, man. We are decimating these units. Heath's division is just, look at that. Davis's brigade has 937 casualties and they haven't retreated yet. Can't, get, can't lose when you, Jesus had your back. So those repeating rifles did their jobs and did them well. Where did our other brigade fall back to? Devon? Really, Devon? Would it help if we run away more? My goodness, dude. Get back in the fight. All right, how close is the infantry? We've actually got some dispatches here. Oh, it's just the back and forth on McPherson Ridge. Come on, boys. And General Reynolds, when you come up, um, just maybe not go near the Iron Brigade and encourage them into the field. That will not go well for you, sir. All right, so we can give w uh, Wadsworth the orders for the division, and we're gonna. I think we're going to take them up to Oak Ridge right here. Here's the railroad cut right here. I actually want to go to this side of the railroad cut, I think. Devin the coward. <laughs> losing a lot of men. You can start to see the dead that are lying in the field. We've lost 200 men, but man, Gamble. Heroic feat, sir, but he's down to just 14 rounds of ammunition. So he's going to have to fall back pretty soon. What's going on here? Yeah, Gamble low on ammunition. I 
We also have Howard uh, arrives with uh, his first of his brigades, von Steinwer. All right, let's zoom out because we want to start giving the 11th Corps their orders. And they're coming up from Tawny Town Road. So Howard's set to deploy right there, but we're actually going to go ahead and deploy him north. Let's go right. We'll just start right here, and then we'll decide as we get closer exactly where we want them. Promote Gamble. He's a hero. Yeah. Okay. Two hundred thirty nine losses now. Down to twelve rounds of ammunition, so pretty soon he's gonna have to give up the fight just because of supply. But here's the Iron Brigade. They're gonna come up here next to Caliph's battery, and that's where we're gonna form our line. Cutler's brigade actually fired the first shots for Union infantry during the battle. It was the 56 Pennsylvania. And the only reason I know that is because my great-great-great-grandfather was a private uh, in Company I of the 56 Pennsylvania. All right, so the guns are still hot, which is good. And they're firing at will. Gamble's down to just 10 rounds of ammunition. Mr. Allegra, I believe there should be a way to, to get ammunition. I haven't gotten that far into the game yet to figure that out. Yeah, Panda, I was thinking the same thing. And I don't know if part of that is the settings that you use at the beginning. Because uh, at the beginning, it's got the AI uh, setting, and I have it set to one. Uh, so, and that's AI aggressiveness. So maybe if you make them more aggressive, they do more in exploiting the flanks and things like that. Bull party, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is I'm, I'm sure there's a way to get resupplied. I just haven't gotten far enough into the game. We just got the key this morning. Uh, so I haven't gotten far enough into the game to be able to figure that out yet. All right, we're still waiting. The Iron Brigade and Cutler are coming through town now. Who's that? Oh, that's Meade. General Meade arriving on the battlefield. Here we go. Uh, oh, that's the 11th Corps coming up. Oh, that's Artillery Brigade for the 11th Corps. Let's take a look at who all we got here. Ah, Leopold von Gisa. Why are the dead bodies moving? There's Carl Schurz. Man, he was a thorn in Grant's side in politics after the war. A thorn on a lot of people's sides. All right. Come on, infantry. I could have given them double quick orders, but I wanted them to arrive as fresh as possible, especially since we're holding so well. But eventually he's going to get those other divisions up. Now that Meade is on the battlefield, can I give orders through Buford, or does Meade have to send orders? I think I can still give the orders that way. Let's click on Buford. And see how this works. Yeah, so there's Buford's, but you can see those those little blocks. That means that they're um, kind of in disarray a little bit, I think. So here's the division numbers. 531 casualties, six guns, 57% ammunition. He's down to six rounds. Yeah, uh, you can see how many casualties you inflicted by looking at the reports. And right there, we've caused 1,930 casualties. 
Um, we've not taken any prisoners. And it looks like that's about it that we can see for now. These are the commander reports where you can see how many battles they fought in, what their experience is, their fame, leadership, initiative, administration, cunning, and their ranking. I don't know exactly how all of that fits into things, but... We're going to probably go ahead and... I don't know. We're still... Yeah, that is a bad spot for the artillery because of the woods. There's really not a good spot for it unless I come over here somewhere. Honestly, the best thing for us is to get back to McPherson Ridge. Is Devin back? Uh, I think he might be on his way. There he is right here. But you can see how he looks on the map now. He doesn't look like a full brigade anymore because he's in bad shape. I'll be right back. One second, guys. Got to grab my laptop charger. We'll go ahead and let these guys keep fighting while the infantry gets into position. Oh boy, looks like they've taken it again. Oh yeah, Zachary Zanto, you're absolutely right. This battle could best be described by the word reinforcements. All right, here we go. We're getting Wadsworth's division up now. We're going to go ahead and put them in a position on McPherson Ridge. Oh. I'm still learning all the interface and everything. We're going to go ahead and let these guys get out of there because they're out of ammunition. Historically, they went ahead and moved out to cover the flanks while the infantry came in. I'm not going to play through this whole battle, guys. We'll play a little bit longer, but um, uh, just mainly, this was mainly about uh, just kind of showing you the features of the game. I'm definitely going to start a campaign later on today. Um, Caliph in contact. Buford, he's given a contact report, but we already know he's in contact. So you can see here, this is the Iron Brigade. They've got Lawrence rifles, 60 rounds of ammunition. Yeah, Dread Minion, I agree. Yeah, and Panda, I would agree with that too. These battles are definitely going to be longer. I can, I'm already anticipating when I play the campaign that it's going to be just insanely long because <laughs> there's so much to manage and, and these battles. And, and you don't have to fight the battles. You can auto-resolve the battles like you do on Total War. Let me zoom out to the tactical for a minute here. How close is the 11th Corps? There's General Meade coming into the town. 11th Corps is down around Little Round Top right now, making their way up. Let's see what we've got here. Garnet's battery, Heath's division. You can see there's Brockenborough, he's shattered. 
but he's coming back. Artillery's back at it on McPherson Ridge. All right, let's get Cutler over here. I should have put him in on the other side of that battery. Face this way, boys. I've given Gamble orders to fall back a couple of times, actually. He just hasn't. Oh, he's done it now. Finally. This is him over here. Right there. That's General Wadsworth coming up. What do we got here? Pettigrew's brigade. Pettigrew had a really big brigade, too. All right. We don't want to be right on top of the artillery, guys. That's just a recipe for disaster. Can we move over this way a little more? They've only lost eight men. They're already shown as disrupted, and I think part of that's because of where they are. I didn't give very good orders because I, I gave them orders at the same spot that I'd given the artillery orders. So those are things you're going to have to think through when you play this game, I think. Yeah, Panda, I agree. Uh, speeding up will definitely be happening. Um, other battles, I mean, Gettysburg, you know, because of how it goes, the contact starts right away. But in some of the campaign battles, you could have situations where you haven't made contact with the enemy yet. So you're deploying your troops to various spots and then you're speeding up and then they're going to make contact. And thankfully, because of that initiative order, your general can deploy his troops automatically to, f to deal appropriately with the threat in front of him. So this is a little more micromanaging than you might necessarily always have to do in a battle. So the Iron Brigade's over here right now. Haven't lost anybody yet. Iron Discipline 3. These men fight as if they were made of iron, one could think. Their discipline will hold under harsh conditions. So in other words, not like Devon's Cavalry. They don't have any experience. So as units gain experience, you can add perks to those units which is a really cool feature that will be available in the campaign. And yeah, um, Yites, that's actually kind of a, an idea that you, because there's a lot of ways you can play this. You can play where you don't do the battles at all, like maybe you're Lincoln just giving orders to generals. You could play as though I could be Meade and just issue orders to generals and let them fight out the details, which is kind of what I did with Oliver Howard where I've given him an order to deploy his core up here. Uh, and then they'll kind of figure out the details from there. Right now we're in, uh, actually we should be in March columns right now. I don't know why we're not. I think they are. And we could speed things up and kind of see how that unfolds for a little bit. It's still only 10 o'clock in the morning. Looks like Archer's coming at Cutler. Hey, take care, Zachary. Yeah, handsome. We're going to have to dive in and explore the, our, the uh, cavalry at some point. Let's go ahead and slow back down now. I find myself holding shift and trying to change their facing like it's Ultimate General Civil War. So Cutler's lost uh, 57 men so far. Meredith, 26. Let's see how they're doing on inflicting casualties. So now we're going to go back out to the 1st Corps. 1st Division. 
No, that's we want strength or combat. Uh, so so far they've lost. You can see the casualties there, and I love it's broken down: killed, wounded, and missing. Uh, so second brigade, that's Cutler, has inflicted 235 casualties and lost 47. That's fantastic. They took my artillery? Yeah, it looked like they did. Yeah, I think we're probably going to have to set the AI to aggressive for the campaign. Because AI aggressiveness on one definitely seems to be having an impact. It's, it's kind of been easy for me because they haven't exploited things that have happened. Can we see a charge? Yeah, I can do that. I'm going to be wrapping up here in just a couple minutes. Uh, we're definitely going to start a campaign later today. Um, but let's see a charge. Oh, here, let, let's look at the infantry uh, options. Lay down, long range, medium range, short range, charge. Let's do it. Sorry for the whistle there, guys. So we're going to give Cutler an order to charge. Let's see if he just kind of does that. This line indicates that the orders are coming in. And there you can actually see the courier coming with the order. Anyone want a bacon sandwich? Yep, there. Okay, see? As soon as the courier arrived, they started advancing. I feel like they've changed their mind. Maybe we just need to say charge and not do anything after. Uh, Hendrix, I'll probably do my first campaign as the USA just to get my feet wet. It'll be easier. I think Confederates will be too hard to play until I have a better handle on the game itself. Still not quite sure how the charge mechanic's supposed to work. Because they don't seem to be doing it. So let's watch the courier come from come from Wadsworth. And then see what they do. You can see there's a lot of dispatches coming in that I haven't been looking at. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some AI aggressive testing for sure to find the, the right balance for that. See, the courier's going in with the charge order, but they're not charging. I don't know what I need to do to make that happen. Pender arrives. Doubleday arrives. A lot of things happening on the battlefield. Just go, charge him. See if we can get the maybe the uh, Iron Brigade to charge. Maybe they're disobeying orders. Yeah, that is a that is a thing in the game. It could just be that the situation is such that they don't want to charge. There goes the courier to the Iron Brigade. See, they, they kind of glitched for a second, but then didn't go. Oh, here we go. There we go. Once the order went in, it gave me that little melee button, and I was able to right-click on Archer's Brigade and send the Iron Brigade in. So let's try that again with these guys. So once the order comes in, we'll watch for that courier and then see if that changes to a melee symbol on Pettigrew. Still figuring this out, guys. Yeah, no, it's, see, it's not. They're like, forget that. Ain't doing it. So I, I think it's just that Pettigrew's got a really big brigade and they don't want to. Mark, you mean the VAT-69? 
who would want to charge toward bullets. Fair point, fair point. All right, let's zoom out one last time and kind of see where everything's at on the battlefield. You can see Meade has arrived now, so he's there uh, back near the seminary. The 11th Corps is just now arriving into town. Oliver Howard doing what Oliver Howard does. Now, he gets a bad rap, but he was actually a really decent guy. He just had some bad moments on the battlefield. Who's this here? Oh, he's waiting because he's got additional units coming up. That's why. So I got word that Doubleday had arrived, but I don't actually see him yet. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up right there, guys. Uh, oh, uh, have I ever played, if I ever got Fall of Samurai, I recommend Gotcha, Mr. Beep. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I just wanted to give you kind of a first look. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm super excited about this game. Thank you to all the new folks who joined today. Uh, be watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications because when my first video of my campaign goes live, you will definitely be able to find out right away. Uh, so check that out. Thank you, guys. I'm going to drop out for now. We'll see you again soon.